Okay guys, when the going gets tough, the tough baked bread. Today I'm going to make two loaves, uh, which is what I'm going to do today. Now I'll post the single loaf recipe down in the description uh, for a simple whole wheat bread. And so I have the ingredients out here in front of me. And uh, what this calls for, uh, and I'm just going to read, now everything is doubled here. But the single recipe, it's um, one to one and an eighth cups of lukewarm water. And of course, I have two and a quarter here. And a quarter cup of vegetable oil. Well, here's a half a cup. And that's canola oil. It's the only vegetable oil we use. And then it's a quarter cup of either honey, molasses, or maple syrup. Well, this is blackstrap molasses that we got at the Amish store. Um, and you can use white sugar if you want to. We prefer not to use any white sugars, but um, the blackstrap molasses, if you use it, makes a little bit of a darker loaf. If you use maple or honey, they turn out just about the same. Of course, the maple syrup would have um, a little bit of a maple tinge to it, if you like that sort of thing. And I do, but um, I just we have a lot of this molasses, and I like that darker, rich loaf. And then uh, it's calling for three and a half cups of white whole wheat flour. So, of course, I'll be putting seven cups into the bowl. And then um, two and a half teaspoons of instant yeast. So that's going to be, that, that's an average pack. So, of course, I'm doing two loaves, and I'll be using two packages of the active dry yeast. Now, if you have the type of yeast that you have to bloom first, you want this water to be about 110 degrees and you'll put the yeast in there and stir it and then let it kind of fizz and, and bloom up before you want to add it to your mix. Um, you don't have to do that so much with the active dry yeast. And uh, let's see, it says a quarter of a cup of uh, non-fat dry milk. So here's a half a cup. Again, we're doubling the recipe. And then one and a quarter teaspoons of salt. Well, here's uh, two and a half teaspoons of just kosher salt. And that is about it. So um, I'm going to start measuring the ingredients. So I'd like to take all the dry ingredients and mix them together. And I'm going to combine all the wet ingredients and put them in that mixer behind me, which you can't see. I'll show a close-up of that. But there it sits ready to go. And I've got the dough hook on there. But we're going to be uh, combining all the wet ingredients first. And then we'll be adding the flour mix a little at a time until we get the dough we want. So. Right, so combine all the dry ingredients, I had to go to a larger bowl. All the dry ingredients are in here. The yeast, the powdered milk, the salt, and the flour. So you just want to kind of get it semi-mixed together. I'm going to raise this up and I'm going to mix those wet ingredients together pretty well. You can use your mixing paddle on this if you want, but your dough hook will do okay. All right, that's pretty good. So I'm going to drop that down. Now I'm going to start adding this flour in here about a half cup at a time. And just start blending it in. So you just want to bring your bowl up. Start out slowly so you don't spray flour everywhere. And running on slow speed, now you just want to start adding your flour in. And you'll know when you get a nice dough ball in there. Once you see all the little dry pockets in there start disappearing, then you can speed it up just a little bit. Hold off. I'm going to let everything kind of disperse. I'm just going to leave this go. But as that stretches and pulls the flour, that is what develops the glutens that you want for a rise. When I was in the Navy and I helped the night baker, we had, it was a big Hobart mixer like this that was big enough I could get in this bowl. Thing was awesome. Okay, the stand mixer worked this for about 10 minutes, and I'm getting ready to transfer it into 
this big bowl which I have oiled a little bit with some canola oil. I just use the canola oil spray for this. Take it out. And that is a heavy, dense dough, but that's what you're shooting for. So you want to turn it in here. You want the top of that dough covered with oil. Then I just pack it down. Now I'm going to get some cling wrap now. I'm going to just push it down and cover the dough with it just loosely. And what I have done is I started the oven at uh, 200 degrees for one minute and shut it off. Then I'm going to put this bowl in the oven. I'm going to let this dough proof for about two hours. It may or may not double in size, but um, you need to let the yeast start working. Okay, it's been a couple of hours, so I'm just going to pull this plastic wrap off. dough is just about doubled in size, not quite. Now you just want to kind of punch it down, get some of the gas out of it. All right, so that dough just about doubled in size. So what I did was I just sprayed a little cooking oil, um, spray canola here on the surface of the counter, turned the dough out, kind of smacked it down to get some of that gas out, and then divide it in two. And, uh, Put it in these two loaf pans and it's going to rise again for about another hour, hour and ten minutes or so, just until the dough um, gets right or right at or above the top. So these loaf pans, and then it's going to bake at 350 degrees for 35 to 40 minutes or until you just thump the top and it has that nice hollow sound of a done loaf of bread. Okay, the bread has finished rising in the loaf pans. I had it in that uh, warmed oven uh, until just a few minutes ago. Now, I've got it preheated to 350 degrees. So we're going to put these in, set the timer for about 40 minutes. Um, takes this whole wheat a little longer to bake, and I will show them to you when we get them out of the oven. And here they are. They're baked. Now they're going to cool in the pan just for a little bit then I'm going to transfer them over to this cooling rack. We just bag them up and this is our bread uh, for the next week. So uh, that is baking whole wheat bread. Give it a try guys if you have a notion. Um, I think you'll be happy. So I want to tell you Merry Christmas and uh, have a Happy New Year and we'll see you next time we have something worth putting on YouTube. <laughs> Thanks a lot.